Welcome to Parasol Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. And it is a Monday. And that means mini sewed. Yeah, I know you guys all wait eagerly on Mondays for that Monday afternoon mini sewed to drop where we give you, uh, you know, we, t- we cover one topic and we cover it really uh, fast, you know, quickly. So 10, 15 minutes, you're going to get your, uh, your, it's not really a midweek fix. It's like a, it's like a start of the week fix before your midweek episode. And if you're not listening to the podcast, if you just found us on YouTube, uh, we have a long form podcast that goes, you know, usually well over an hour and we cover lots of different things. We have a whole format we follow. Uh, so definitely check us out uh, on whatever podcast platform or on YouTube. Uh, but today we're talking about organizing and being organized as a reseller, why it's important. And I'd have to say this is probably one of the number one things that is going to either make or break you as a reseller. I agree. And this could be like a whole episode, but we're going to do it real quick. Uh, so the first one is is sourcing. And the, and the reason I say that you need to be organized in your sourcing is you'll be able to maximize your profit. So this can go various ways. It could be whether you plan routes to go garage sales, you plan routes to go to thrift stores, you plan, you know, what you're going to do once you get the item. Like if, if you're a person that believes in laundering items, how are you going to do that? Right. If, if this means. Oh, launder is in like clean it. Yeah, yeah. Not like laundering money. No, 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 no. We're not that kind of podcast. And so, you know, whether, you know, how are you going to source on certain days? Like, I think there needs to be some kind of system in place. Yeah. If, if you, it goes back to that old adage, if you don't, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And, you know, if you're just doing it as a hobby and you're driving home and you're like, oh, there's a thrift store. I that's should still okay. Yeah, that's fine. But, but if you want to scale. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with you've got maybe a nine to five or you, you are doing this full time and there's a planned route of, you know, I'm going to go to this thrift store on Mondays because I'm already driving into town to drop off at this place or to. And so I'm saving gas. I'm saving time. I know where I'm going to be. I have a plan while I'm sourcing in thrift stores. What departments do I hit first? Where's the profit at? What time of the day do they stock? Learning all those things and being being uh, tactful about how you do it and actually uh, being a little bit strategic, you're going to be you're going to be way more profitable if you're organized with how and when you source. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Now that also goes with your listing, right? When you after you source the items, you come home. You got to be organized in your listing. And what I mean is by just basic things. Do you have all your items that you need to uh, photograph easily accessible, right? Or are you kind of, <laughs> there was a time when I had a light box and that light box sometimes was on the living room under the laundry basket. Sometimes it was in the bedroom under the bed. Like, do you have everything in one place so you can easily access it? Yeah. And even your items organized in a way where you're Correct. listing similar items. So are you listing a bunch of shoes at one time, are you listing a bunch of shirts at one time, as opposed to one of the drawbacks of listing as soon as you get things, if you go to garage sales, you might pick up three shirts, two pairs of shoes, uh, one video game console, one. Mm -hmm. And if you list instantly, which there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you've got the time, go for it. But if you're the kind of person, you've got a big business, you've already got death piles, just organize your death piles into shoes and VCRs and, you know, hard goods and whatever else. So that way you say, okay, on Tuesdays, I'm going to list clothing. And on Wednesdays, I'm going to list these items. Because when you're listing similar things, you can get into a groove. You can get into you know a, a rhythm, which is going to actually be more beneficial than constantly shifting gears, constantly figuring out, oh, wait, now I need the tape measure. I haven't needed the tape measure this whole time, but now I need it. So I'm going to go get it. And I mean, as opposed to you're just doing them, bam, bam, bam. Good to go. Agreed. Agreed. Now, once the item sells, you also need to be organized, right? And there's two ways, right? One is all your shipping supplies should be organized. I can't tell you. One of the things I love about, I keep saying I can't tell you. One of the things I love about being in this bigger space is I actually have a whole space that just is for shipping, right? So I have all my boxes in there, my bubble wrap, my tape, my, um, and not even just shipping, my Scotty peelers to like remove tags from stuff that's new, uh, you know, my toner, my uh, shipping labels, like everything. Right. And so I'm never wasting time trying to find items and trying to figure out what to do uh, when an item sells. So I can quickly, you know, ship out 10 to 15 items within 10 to 15 minutes. It doesn't take me a lot of time. Yeah, uh, and having boxes organized. So if you're buying, if you're a big enough operation where you're buying all your boxes and you've got your sizes, it's easy peasy. But if you're trying to save a little money, you're just starting out and you're still dumpster diving for boxes or having your friends give you boxes. If you just got a pile of boxes in the corner, it's going to be a nightmare finding the right size. Whereas if you're to spend a little bit of time to 
lay them up against a wall by size. The tall ones, the biggest ones go in the back and they get smaller as you get to the front. Then you can kind of, you know, gauge where you're going instead of mm -hmm. digging through 30 boxes to find the right size. You might only have to go through a couple before you get the right size. So having that stuff put in the right place is going to make shipping much, much easier. 100%. Now, this is the one that, oh, well, this is one that I hate and it's bookkeeping. Mm. And I, I'll, I will say if I could redo everything, I would start slowly bookkeeping and being super organized. So whether that meant keeping tracking and uh, keeping track of my mileage through an app using GoDaddy bookkeeping or QuickBooks or some kind of system, keeping receipts, like all that stuff. If you do not stay on top of that, and I'm speaking of, from a person that just had to extend their uh, taxes uh, because they were poorly organized for this last year, uh, it will catch up to you. And so I strongly urge you to be organized in your bookkeeping. Yeah, it's really important. Like you said, it's good if you can do it at the beginning. But it's one of those things where, you know, in our last podcast, you talked about spending the week getting organized and getting everything going. Sometimes it's worth doing to say, you know what, I'm going to take the next two days and I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill out this Excel sheet. And there's lots of good free ones online. There's there's other resellers who have templates mm -hmm. already made. Um, I've got a, my own template that I use and I just use Google Sheets and I put in information, what I bought, what I bought it for, uh, what it sold for. And the nice thing is you can set it up to have equations so you can see how much profit you made what the net profit was, what, how much you paid in shipping, how much you paid in shipping on this category. So I'm a numbers person. I like to be able to, to break it down and see how much money have I made in the last two months on shoes? How much have I spent in shipping on shoes? Is that a category that I'm leaking money in? Mm. And so it, it does cost you a little bit of time and energy up front, but in the long run, that data can be really, really useful, especially when you consider all of the big companies that we talk about a lot, like Amazon or even a lot of social media companies, really what it is, is it's data management. They're, oh, they're yeah. make money off of having data. And so the more data you have, it's power if you utilize it well. Otherwise, it's, it, you're not, you might be losing money in a category and you don't even realize it. Agreed. Agreed. All right. And the last thing here, if you want to grow as a reseller, you got to be organized. I, I just, I don't see any other way. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I know plenty of resellers that you know, they have a hoarder house and they have stuff everywhere and uh, kind of like my place is looking right now, but, uh, and they're able to make it, but it just becomes inconvenient and they're unable to scale because they're unable to notice, you know, am I losing money here? Cause I have items that aren't listing. Am I losing money because I'm, I'm shipping stuff incorrectly cause I'm not organizing my shipping. Am I losing money cause I'm not bookkeeping. Uh, and so therefore I'm paying too much in taxes. Like if you want to grow, if you want to scale, you got to be organized as a reseller. So hopefully all these tips help you make sure that you're organizing your sourcing, listing, shipping, bookkeeping, and eventually all those will help you grow. And with that being said, make sure to be real, be relevant and be reselling leads. Peace.